Hello, my name is Eliza Sylvia and I am currently a graduate student here at the University of Guelph. I would like to welcome you to the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences Convocation Ceremony this morning. The University of Guelph is honored by our graduates and we take great pride in this convocation. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the proceedings today. The ceremonials used for conferring degrees have evolved over a millennium and the gowns and hoods represent that history. In general, the gowns for the baccalaureate and magisteriate degrees are black and the color of the hood is different for each degree program. The doctorates at the University of Guelph have a bright blue gown and the honorary degrees are red. The University of Guelph crest that you can see on the curtains behind me are shown on the cover of the convocation program also represents our specific history. The emblems in the crest show links with the Royal City of Guelph through the white stallion above, the connection to liberal arts through the book, to the sciences through the astrolobe, and to our connection to abundance and agriculture through the cornucopia. The University of Guelph motto, Rerum Cognoscare Cosas, is a quote from Virgil. It is variously translated to be either, happy is the one who is able to ascertain the reason of things, or perhaps to know the meaning of things. The procession of people into the hall are also influenced by ancient tradition. The piper will herald the start of the procession of graduates, the students who are coming to graduate today. This will be followed by the arrival of the mace, leading the platform party. The mace is a symbol of authority of the university and will be carried by the beetle. In medieval universities, a beetle was chosen by the instructor to work as an assistant. Today, the beetle is a ceremonial officer of the Senate. Following the beetle and mace is the vice chancellor, members of the administration and honorees, fellows of the university, members of the board and senate, and members of faculty and staff. The degrees will be conferred in the order that you see in your program. The degrees are separated by categories representing the specific degree being awarded within the college. We will begin with doctorates and magisteriates, followed by the baccalaureate degrees. The name reader will present scholars to the vice chancellor by degree category. As the name of each student is called, the beetle will place the hood over the recipient's shoulders. This moment will be videoed, and technology willing, there will be a simultaneous live cast of the event to, fall, to allow family members and friends to watch from a distance. The vice chancellor will greet each student at the center of the stage, and a photograph will be taken. We understand the joy and excitement accompanying such an auspic auspicious occasion, but we ask that you hold your applause until after each group of graduates has crossed the stage there will be an opportunity for truly thunderous applause. Once all the degrees are conferred and the cheers are cheered, the Vice Chancellor will close the ceremony and the recessional will play. Please remain standing during the recessional until all of the platform party has processed out of the hall. Our colleagues from the Alumni Affairs are hosting a social media program developed especially for convocation. Please share your photos, memories, and advice with graduating students by joining us on social media using the hashtag GuelphGrad. Finally, may I be the first person to congratulate the graduates on their various successes and offer my congratulations to the family and friends who are here to support them. Welcome to the convocation at the University of Guelph.
Canada, our home and native land. True patriot love in all thy sons' command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. On this day of celebrated accomplishment, we pause and reflect on our place in this world. This morning, we acknowledge the Adirondaran people on whose traditional territory the University of Guelph now resides. And we pay our respects to their Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Métis neighbors. On this day that marks the end of a journey, we give thanks. We give thanks for the friendships that have been forged along the way. We give thanks for all those who have supported us, faculty, staff, administration, and families. I invite you, each in your own way, to take a moment of silence, to reflect on that for which you are grateful, to offer a prayer. As we step into a new tomorrow, may the knowledge that we have gained here be coupled with wisdom and infused with compassion and clothed with humility, that we might contribute to the flourishing of all humanity, that we might embrace the forgotten, enhance the sustainability of all things, and fully discover together what it means to be human. May grace and peace abound. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm absolutely delighted today to officially open the 2017 University of Guelph Convocation Ceremonies and welcome everyone here, Chancellor Billis, members of the board, honorary fellows, faculty, staff, family and friends of the graduates as we celebrate the achievements of our graduating class. Welcome to the celebration of convocation here at the University of Guelph. My name is Franco Vaccarino and I have the honor and the privilege of serving as the president and vice chancellor of this great university. Now I'm particularly pleased today to welcome Dr. Martha Billis to preside over her first, her first convocation ceremonies this week as chancellor of the University of Guelph. Just last week, Dr. Billis was installed as the university's ninth chancellor and the first University of Guelph graduate to hold that position. A Canadian business icon, well-known philanthropist and controlling shareholder of Canadian Tire Corporation, Dr. Billis graduated in 1963 from the McDonald Institute, one of University of Guelph's founding colleges. She also received her honorary degree in 2013 here at the University of Guelph. And in a way, her appointment as chancellor brings her full circle to her alma mater, where perhaps she, firm, she first learned some of the lessons, including life lessons, that have stood her in good stead throughout her career, and that we still aim to impart to our students, including today's graduates. Please join me in welcoming our new chancellor. I'd like to also extend a particular welcome to this morning's convocation speaker, Professor Andrea Buchholz, who will be um, speaking uh, in, in a little while. 
So again, congratulations to all the, the graduates. And um, before our chancellor uh, comes up, I'd like to share a few uh, words uh, with you. Graduates, this is your big day. You've worked hard, you've persevered, and you've made it. Well done, well deserved. So think fast. We've all heard that expression. You don't often hear anyone telling you to think slow. My main, my main message today is twofold. Think fast and think slow. As a psychologist and neuroscientist, I'm interested in cognitive science and, of course, the neurosciences. And speaking as well as a parent of university-aged children, I believe your minds are different from those of your parents' generation. We see how you absorb information, how you interact with and through information technology in unprecedented ways. Young people are very, very good at coping with lots of information and shifting their attention appropriately. Your brains have fundamentally adapted to a very, very fast-paced world. Today we're navigating a river of knowledge, one that's growing larger and faster all the time. New ideas come to us at an unprecedented pace, new innovations, new ways to, to connect the dots and understand the world. We need to process more information, more and more information, in the same amount of time. We need to think faster. We might call that fast thinking reactive thinking. Reactive thinking is a kind of tactical thinking that allows you to manage um, the, 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 the present. It, it's what helps a driver negotiate the twists and turns of the road from moment to moment. But there's another kind of thinking, reflective thinking or slow thinking. It takes a more strategic view. Not that I'm suggesting that you think more slowly in a literal sense. I'm talking about a different way of thinking, a different kind of thought than tactical or reactive. In our fast-paced world, universities are increasingly important places for both kinds of thinking. Reactive thinking, fast thinking that addresses the now, but also reflective thinking that rises above the here and now to take the long-term view, considering the broader context, to consider tomorrow, the day after. As students at the University of Guelph, you have benefited during the past few years from an environment that has challenged your thinking an environment that nurtures freedom of thought and expression and inquiry, an environment that promotes and supports openness to new ideas, one that invites varied perspectives on a problem or opportunity. We've tried to encourage you to exercise both reactive and reflective thinking. We've stressed, we've stressed the kind of thinking that enables you not just to provide the right answers, but also to ask the right questions. We've looked to nurture thinking that is disciplined and thinking that is interdisciplinary, that draws upon diverse experiences and diverse points of view. That kind of thinking is even more important in a world where the challenges and the opportunities we face are larger and more complex than ever. Big problems, big opportunities need lots of minds thinking together on solutions. And not just like minds, but also unlike minds. Unlike minds from varied perspectives, from different backgrounds. You know, there's a proverb that goes something like this. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. You're about to explore and discover the next phase of your lives, including, I hope, finding ways to improve life for others around you and in the wider world. Go together, think fast, and think slow. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Vaccarino. My name is Martha Billis, and I have the honour of serving as Chancellor here at the University of Guelph. And what an honour it is to be here today back at the University of Guelph, my alma mater. I think back to when I was in your shoes, proud to be a Mac Institute graduate and anxious to take on the next challenge around the corner. 
Problem is, we do not always know what is coming or how we're going to get there. Today, I want to instill in you a belief my dean, Margaret McCready, instilled in me years ago. She was full of advice, but most often, I remember she would say, now ladies, remember you are Mac girls and Mac girls can do anything. And she was right. I stand before you today to proudly and confidently tell you that the education I received here gave me the wherewithal to go out and strive beyond that which I thought I was capable of. Since the days of its founding colleges, the University of Guelph has been a leader in practical education focused on the whole person. The university fosters an environment that encourages its community of students to aim higher, to make things better, to be more productive, to turn preconceived notions on their head, to make a difference, to improve life. My education opened up doors and offered windows on the world I could not have imagined. Half a century later, those things are still happening here at this fantastic institution. Graduands, your windows are waiting. It's now your turn, your turn to make a difference and to improve life for ourselves and for others. I know you can do it because you are, after all, a University of Guelph graduate, and you can do anything. Good luck to you all. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, upon the recommendation of the Council on Undergraduate Academic Advising of the University of Guelph, I have the honor to present to you Linda Zares as the recipient of the 2017 Excellence in Undergraduate Academic Advising Medallion. The medallion was established in 2003 to recognize high quality academic advising and is awarded annually to an individual or a group that have been nominated by a member of the university community as having made an outstanding contribution to academic advising at the undergraduate level. Since that time, the medallion has been given to 11 deserving program counselor and faculty advisor recipients and one program counseling team. This year's recipient, Linda Zares, has been the program counselor for the Bachelor of Applied Science degree program since 2004. The letters submitted to support her nomination recognized her experience and expertise and commented on the care and compassion she always shows to the students she assists. The letters include, included described Linda as gentle and compassionate, as well as welcoming, approachable, and kind. They said that she makes it, her students feel cared for. Student submissions gave Linda credit for helping them stay in school through difficult personal times. And faculty staff submissions stated that Linda is both deeply respected by and respectful of students, faculty, and staff. In summary, Linda's nomination made it clear to the selection committee that she consistently displays the qualities uh, that this award was established to recognize. On behalf of the Council on the Undergraduate Academic Advising, I am very pleased to have you present the 2017 Excellence in Undergraduate Academic Advising Medallion to a very deserving Linda Zares.
I am pleased to now invite Andrea Bacoltz, Associate Professor in Applied Human Nutrition, to now give the convocation address. Professor. Thank you, Madam Chancellor. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to begin with a somewhat odd question. Uh, by a show of hands, and this includes all of our distinguished guests, graduates, parents, friends, partners, and my colleagues behind me, how many of you are familiar with improvisational theater? Please put up your hands if you've heard of improv before. Okay, so I would say roughly about two-thirds of you. So for those of you who didn't raise your hands, improv is unscripted and spontaneous storytelling in which improvisers create a scene on the spot and in real time, often based on audience suggestions. So the host of a show might ask the audience, what's your favorite room in the house? And you would respond, Kitchen. You know, kitchen and washroom, interestingly, are the number one and two offers we always get to that. I don't know how that always happens, but there you go, kitchen and uh, washroom. Or uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? You would say firefighter. I heard firefighter. Excellent. Okay, and magically, improvisers will create a scene about a kitchen or about firefighting right before your eyes. So to the audience, it may look like there's no structure or rules guiding improvisers, but there are. And I'm going to share with you uh, today two principles of improv that I have learned in my 12 plus years as a comedic improviser and how I think we can all benefit from applying these rules to life. So the first and arguably uh, the most important is to say yes. So let's go back to the occupation of firefighting. There's a chance that none of the improvisers on stage really understand the intricate dance underlying the profession of firefighting. But we can't not do the scene because we don't know really what firefighting might all be about. We can't say no. We, we have to say yes, we get up on stage, we figure it out as we go. Saying yes moves the narrative forward. And we're going to see how that works. So if I were to ask you, uh, what do you, I don't know, what do you not normally find in a refrigerator, what might you say? Cash. cash. Yeah, indeed. What, one would be a little concerned if one were to find cash in your refrigerator. That's true. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And after each one, and I notice my colleagues are being a little bit quiet behind me, so I'm, gonna, I'm looking at you. I've got eyes in the back of my head. Uh, after each question, I want you to say yes, loud and clear. Understand? Yes. Do you want to hear a story? Yes. Is this story about cash? Is cash really overrated? Yes. Did you spend a lot of cash for your education here? Yes. Do, are you happy that you did so? Yes. Would you like to give the University of Guelph more money? Yes. Will you do so on your way out today? Yes. All right. We're going to repeat the same exercise, but this time I want you to say no. Do you want to hear a story? No. <laughs> Saying no in improv is called blocking. It stops the narrative dead in its tracks. Saying no in real life means the same thing. You stop your own narrative. Think of how many times we might say no in life. Maybe it's a job ad to which you're afraid to respond. You know, you tell yourself, I'm not good enough for this job. Or maybe you've never run a marathon, but you kind of want to, but you tell yourself, I don't know, there's no way I can do that. I, I can't even run around the block. But what if you did respond to that job ad and you got an interview? What if you enrolled in that running training program and learned distance running. In other words, what if you got out of your way? What if you didn't block yourself and you said yes? Who knows where that could take you? The second principle of improv is to fail often. 
I have played in, and to be honest, I've been responsible for a stunning number of unsuccessful improv scenes. The kind where not only is there not any laughter, there's that look on audience members' faces. It's that dreaded mix of pity and boredom, often accompanied by a gentle nod and tilt of the head. <laughs> but it's okay. Because for every one of these stinkers, a great scene is right around the corner, one which picks you up and makes you feel alive for just having tried again. So maybe in the end, you know what, you didn't get that job. What you got was interview experience, and that will serve you well later. What if you crawled across the finish line of that marathon, or maybe you didn't even finish at all? Who cares? You tried running a marathon. You know how few people even bother trying? So try things and fail. Fail often, fail spectacularly. In the words of Keith Johnstone, a famous improviser, and I quote, we all have to make a thousand mistakes before we get a grip on what it is that we're doing. So get out there and start making them. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2017. Thank you, Professor Buchholz. That was great. <laughs> well, everyone, now is the moment you have been waiting for. Will the graduating class please rise? <laughs> Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars who have fulfilled the statutory requirements laid down by the Senate of the University of Guelph, that they may be admitted to their various and several degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the University of Guelph, I hereby accept you for admission to your various and several degrees with all the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. Will members of the graduating class please be seated? Good morning, graduates and proud family and friends of the graduates. I'm Gwen Chapman. I'm the Dean of the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences. Uh, the Department of Family Relations and Applied Nutrition is one of the departments in, in that college. And I'm just so pleased to see uh, graduates of the programs of that department here today. For the family and friends, I'm sure you will be very excited perhaps a little relieved, but certainly happy to see your graduate walking across the stage uh, to be greeted by the president and chancellor. You may want to express your emotions in some audible manner, and this is perfectly fine. Uh, but we ask that the general audience please hold your collective applause uh, until after the presentation of each of the degree programs. Madam Chancellor, Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences that they may be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Science. Catherine Adamski with distinction. Elizabeth Louise Arts with distinction. Maya Alawalia with distinction. Barbara Louise Annette.
Olivia Anthony. Vanessa Beth Armstrong. Richard David Cyril Avery. Laura Barnes with distinction. Leah Barroso with distinction. Savannah Lillian Black with distinction. Rachel Lynn Bogue. Maria Angela Boisvert with distinction. Daniela Bonacci. Jessica Marie Boyer with distinction. Grant Briarly with distinction. Catherine Brown with distinction. Megan Buckle with distinction. Lauren Ashley Caballadas with distinction. Magdalene Louise Cahill with distinction. Claudia Mina Chan with distinction. Alicia Marie Chisholm. Brittany Christie. Alyssa Brianne Cope with distinction. Victoria Page Couture with distinction. Melissa Carolyn Crawford with distinction. Emerald Ruth Peace Zagani. Yasmin Dadalahi with distinction. Rebecca Noreen Dalbello with distinction. Madison Nicole Payne de Decker. Lindsay Amanda DeMello with distinction. Holly Nicole DeSholtis. Amandeep Kaur Dhaliwal with distinction. Regan Denise Duff with distinction. Regan. 
Laura Jean Elliott with distinction. Jesse Michael Erdos Rush. Kelsey Farrar. Jacqueline Heidi Frank. Caitlin Marie Gerber with distinction. Brittany Lynn Gibb. Emma Gibson Bray with distinction. Deborah Vanessa Gores with distinction. Amanda Helen Habenchus. Jillian Francis Hackborn with distinction. Emma Denise Melissa Hardman. Hazel Ruth Harrison. Jeffrey Connor Harrison Edge. <laughs> Vanessa Louise Hart with distinction. Morgan Rose Kate Henderson with distinction. Shaylin Carol Hicks. Hannah Kamal Hamidan with distinction. Allison Yayi Ho with distinction. Sabrina Patricia Anna Holmes with distinction. Carrington Rachel Howell with distinction. Danica Jacobs with distinction. Kelly Lynn Joyce. Danielle Mackenzie Kangas. Jessica Mary Margaret Kennedy. Maris Rebecca Keeler with distinction. Alicia Shrevinska. Crystal Lok Ying Kwan with distinction. Patricia Lamb with distinction. <laughs> Megan Patricia Lawler. Laura Kathleen Laurie. Catherine Jean Leggett. Woo! 
Bridget Lorraine Leon with distinction. Lauren Julie Marcus with distinction. Bridget Joyce Marshall with distinction. Deanna Lynn Martin with distinction. Shannon Lynn McBride with distinction. Sam Christopher McFarlane. Brianna Valerie McKay with distinction. Jesse Sarah Jean McClellan with distinction. Abigail Rose McNelly with distinction. Nicole Lynn Midigal. Jillian Angeles Montoya. Bree Alina Moore Ambrosek with distinction. Melissa Irene Nauta with distinction. Samantha Olson. Jacqueline Laura On with distinction. Tiffany Leah Pauls. <laughs> Shannon Lee Pendleton with distinction. Sydney Taylor Pepper. Sharon Pichumani. Mariana Pinglo. Lisa Pope. Emily May Pritchard with distinction. Jessica Wing Hay Pun with distinction. Andra Radoyu. Rachel Megan Reed with distinction. Megan Laura Robertson. Blossom Richa Rodericks with distinction. <laughs> Lynn Rachel Roadball with distinction. Shurum Salami. Megan Christine Scarth with distinction.
Abby Caitlin Shebesh. Justine Nicole Schwer. Sarah Sharif Shama with distinction. Yasmin Sharif Shama with distinction. Brandon J. Shirk. Dakota Sinasak with distinction. Lucy Sedok. Brianne Marie Skinner with distinction. Kelsey Louise Sobkowicz. Zoe Ann Todd with distinction. Andrea Marie Toole. Leah Vance. Alexandra Venditti. Nisa Ingeborg Vernon. Gabriella Rosanna Volante. Emily Elizabeth Walsh. Yiran Wang with distinction. Krista Nicole Wani. Sarah Renee Waring. Kristen Marie White. Jacqueline Alice Wilson with distinction. Selena Wong with distinction. Woo! Holly Frances Wooten. Woo! Ling Xu. Sydney Megan Yek. Alana Dawn Zare with distinction. Please join me in congratulating these recipients of the Bachelor of Science, Applied Science. Madam Chancellor, I would ask you to confer the various and several degrees on the graduates listed in the program 
but unable to be pre present at this ceremony. By virtue of the authority vested in me and the University of Guelph, I confer the various and several degrees in absentia on the graduates not present. Well, graduates, you did it. Congratulations. Oh, there you go. Well, let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you now to the Griffin alumni family, a growing family. This week, more than 3,400 new graduates are joining that family. And you should know the University of Guelph alumni now number more than 125,000 graduates around the world. As you can imagine, we're all very, very proud of your accomplishments here at the university and look forward to seeing how the foundations, foundations that you've developed here as a student will continue to support you in the future. We want, we want to celebrate your achievements and your success, successes and very much hope that you will stay in touch and remember that you're always welcome here. It's the other point that I would make as graduates. Uh, you've made memories here, including today's ceremony. And remember this as well. You're a student for a short time, but you're a Griffin forever. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Now, that concludes the um, formal part of our ceremony. Uh, the college dean will host a reception for all graduates and their guests in Creelman Hall. And this is really an opportunity to con uh, congratulate the graduates, and we do hope that uh, you're able to attend. And now, the final word is from our chancellor. Thank you, Mr. President. Convocation is dismissed. Just before you all depart, I'd like to offer one last round of congratulations to the graduates. Well done. Once you've taken all your photographs, please return your gowns and hoods to the tent outside this hall. And one last note, we are hosting 23 convocation ceremonies this week. Waiting outside is the next group of families eager to see their graduate cross, cross the stage. To help us prepare the hall for the next group, please exit through the doors to the right and the left of the stage. We will direct the graduates out first and invite uh, family and friends to follow. Thank you for your cooperation. Congratulations. <laughs>